Growing up in the 90s, Michael Jordan was the closest thing any of us had to a real-life superhero. He was beloved by everyone. The Nike Jumpman logo was held in such high esteem, it might as well have been the bat signal. He could fly, well, pretty much, and he fought crime. Okay, well, maybe he didn't fight crime, but still very cool and superhero-like. After all, when the Looney Tunes gang needed to win a basketball game against a team of intergalactic space monsters, who did they turn to for help? Michael Jordan. In the 90s, chances are that even if you weren't a Bulls fan or even a basketball fan, you were still a Michael Jordan fan. There are very few athletes in history who have had that kind of appeal. Jordan was the greatest, not only because of the number of championships the Bulls won while he was playing, but also because of his image and his charisma. He was this inspirational figure, and everyone wanted to be like Mike, myself included. I have here an old pair of Jordan 5s that were once my pride and joy. As you can see, they're pretty worn out and not worth nearly as much as they could be had I kept them in mint condition. But based on sentimental value alone, these shoes are to me priceless. Wearing these shoes, I felt 10 times more confident, 10 times more cool, 10 times more attractive. And I know that's silly, after all, they're just a pair of shoes, but they're the shoes that Michael Jordan wore. And I wasn't the only one who felt this way. If you were one of the 6.1 million people around the world who watched the epic 10-part documentary series, The Last Dance, you would have seen that everywhere Jordan went, he was worshipped and idolised and envied and ultimately imitated to no end. He had everything. He had the shot, the steel, the dunks, the buzzer beaters. He had the shrug, the smile, the swagger, the shoes. He had the success, the wealth, the image, the fame, the adulation. Everyone wanted to be like Mike. But what the last dance also showed was that in reality there was much more to Mike than many of us realised at the time. And actually, there were a whole lot of things about Mike that you wouldn't want to be like. Throughout the series, we see example after example of Jordan harbouring bitter grudges over the smallest of slights. Isaiah Thomas didn't shake his hand. George Carl failed to acknowledge him at a restaurant. Gary Payton claimed he could lock him down. Carl Malone won an MVP. Someone suggested that Clyde Drexler was on his level. And those were just Jordan's opponents. His teammates felt his wrath too. As the episodes rolled on, we learn about how he punched Steve Kerr during training. We saw him berating Scott Burrell day after day after day. We heard BJ Armstrong, Judd Bushler and numerous others talk about how hard it was to play with him. How he cultivated this environment of fear and intimidation, bullying others into submission as a way of maintaining his alpha status. Add to that his problems with gambling, and his refusal to speak up on behalf of the African-American community seemingly in favour of sneaker sales. And suddenly, the man Reggie Miller once famously dubbed Black Jesus doesn't seem as cool or superhero-like as the whole Be Like Mike campaign would suggest. And with all those flaws exposed and out in the open, perhaps it wasn't a surprise to hear Jordan himself utter these words. He said... If I had to do it all over again, there's no way I'd want to be considered a role model. It's like a game that's stacked against me. There's no way I can win. So, to anyone who's ever wanted to be like Mike, Mike says, no you don't. You don't want to be like me. And you know what? I don't want you to be like me either. In fact, I don't even want you to want to be like me. According to Mike himself, wanting to be like Mike is a road that leads to a dead end. It's a game that can't be won. Because he can never live up to the hype. He can never satisfy the image we have of him. It's too much pressure, even for him. This is why they say you should never meet your heroes. The idea is that when you meet them, you'll be disappointed. 
when you inevitably discover that in one way or another, they're just as flawed and broken as you. And then the magic will be gone. But of course, these days, you don't even have to meet your heroes. You can just watch a 10-part documentary series on them. You can look them up on Wikipedia or follow them on social media. I can't tell you how many times I've typed in the name of an actor, athlete, or someone else I've been excited about, only to have this reaction when I've discovered they've done something horrible or been embroiled in some controversy that just ruins them for me. These days, it seems there isn't anyone worth modelling yourself after. Everyone's got dirt on them, and thanks to the internet, you don't have to dig that deep to find it. I wonder if the failure of our heroes is partly what drives us to say things like, be the first you, not the next anyone else. It sounds nice because it makes me feel special and unique and, let's face it, who doesn't love the rock? But in reality, it's almost impossible to live this out. Though we might not talk like it's true, the fact is, originality is very rare. Most of the time, we're just picking and choosing to take on bits of this person when it suits us and bits of that person when it doesn't. And in that sense, we're still modelling ourselves after our heroes. It's just cooler to act like we came up with that thing all by ourselves rather than to admit someone else gave us the idea. No one wants to be the poor man's version of their hero, the cheap imitation of someone they look up to. And in that vein, you might find it surprising that the authors of the New Testament frequently describe the Christian life as a life of imitation, a life of growing in the likeness of another and of following in that other's footsteps. That other is, of course, none other than Jesus, whom Christians believe was God showing up in the world in human flesh. Christians are people who long not to be like Mike, nor to be the first you, but to be like Christ. And unlike the whole Be Like Mike campaign, being like Christ isn't about performance, popularity, style or status. It's about character. You see, according to the New Testament authors, Jesus was the only person to have lived a truly perfect life inside and out. You and I and everyone else, we all have dirt on us. And the longer we live, the more dirt we accumulate. I know that if there was a Wikipedia page about me, if I was famous enough to have one, there'd be a whole lot of dirt on me. Some of you could probably write it. There'd be enough dirt to turn anyone off ever wanting to be like Mr. Lee. And yet, if such a page did exist, I would hope that somewhere on it, it would tell of how, despite my mistakes and despite my failures, despite my most shameful imperfections, I was someone who strove to be like Christ, the one who made no mistakes, the one who never failed, the one who lived a life that was truly perfect inside and out, and yet gave it up on the cross for me, covering all my mistakes, all my failures, all my shameful imperfections. The truth is that the giving of his perfect life for my imperfect life well, that's what keeps me going, even when it feels like the game is stacked against me and there's no way I can win. Because I don't need to win. I don't need to win because Jesus already has, and wouldn't you know it, he promises to share the spoils with me. I don't need to be perfect because he is perfect. Now, someone who got this was the first Christian missionary, the Apostle Paul. After all, Paul was a guy who began his vocation covered in dirt. This was a guy who once spent his days threatening Christians and hunting them down in order to have them killed or thrown in prison. And he would have continued this way for the rest of his life had Jesus not shown up on that road to Damascus. After that encounter, Paul gave his life to Christ and he spent the rest of it traveling around the world urging others to do the same. And that's why in our reading for today, taken from one of his letters, Paul says this, Imitate me as I also imitate Christ. Notice how Paul doesn't just say, imitate me. He's not starting a Be Like Paul campaign. Like Michael Jordan, he knows that's a game he can't win. He knows he's not worthy. So instead he says, imitate me 
as I also imitate Christ. One of the tricky things about picking and choosing bits of this person and that person to be like is working out which bits are worth imitating and which bits aren't. But here, Paul makes it crystal clear which bits of him to imitate. Here he says, if you see me doing anything as an act of following Jesus, striving to be like him, that's the part that's worth imitating. All the rest, forget about it. Leave it behind. It's not worth it. Paul says, look to Jesus. He's the exemplar. Strive to be like him. You know, even after having watched The Last Dance, I still love Michael Jordan. As far as basketball is concerned, he's still the goat in my eyes. And when I'm on the court, he's still the one that I like to pretend to be. Not Kobe, not LeBron, Mike. Because at the end of the day, it's okay to have heroes. And I know that regardless of what I've just said, we're all still going to walk out of here with our favourite sporting heroes, our favourite actors and artists and musicians. And don't get me wrong, I'm certainly not asking you to drop them. But what I am asking is that sometime you take the time to seriously consider the invitation to follow Jesus as the only one worth your total allegiance, the only one worth imitating unreservedly, the only one who lived a life that was truly perfect inside and out and yet gave it up for you and me. Let's pray. Father God, we thank and praise you for your son, the Lord Jesus, who lived the perfect life and yet willingly gave it up for us, covering all our imperfections, all our shortcomings, all our failures, all the dirt in our lives that threatens to ruin us. Please help us to look to Jesus as the ultimate hero in all that we do, that by your spirit we might become more and more like him each and every day of our lives. We pray this in his name. Amen.